Okay. Now let's take a look at the magnet and what the magnet is doing. Very simple. Everybody keeps asking me this question. What's going on in the magnet? Here we know we have our incommensurate system. Mathematically, we know for a fact that the maximum throw of an inverse sphere is a double hyperbola. We know that dielectricity is centripetal, counterspatial, and radial. Here we have our blocked wall. That's not a blocked wall, it's a dielectric inertial plane. It is the capacitance that is driving magnetism. Remember, magnetism is definitionally radiation. Okay, over here, we have the four principles of the universe, dielectricity, magnetism. These are the two co-principles. We have electricity, which we know is the product of magnetism and dielectricity, not my premise, a fact. We know that dielectricity in a special uh, magnetic uh, a stellar or interstellar massive power creates mass particles. We know that gravity, while it is spatially accumulative, has a centripetal field just like dielectricity does. Magnetism is discharge, it is radiation. What do you think polarization means? People say, well, a magnet has two poles. Well, think. What does the word polarization mean? It means the creation of space. Dielectricity doesn't create space. Electricity is spatially uh, additive, but it has a counterspatial nature. That's because the byproduct of dielectricity and magnetism, the same way that gravity and mass is the byproduct of dielectricity and magnetism. What gives matter and mass its massiveness is of course magnetism, not dielectricity. Everything over here is spatial. It is geometric. It is discharge. This is space. This is positive space. This is counter space. This isn't reverse time. This is no time. Everything up here is positive time on our electromagnetic side. Remember we said electricity does not terminate into magnetism, it terminates as magnetism. So let's take a look at our magnet. Here we have our little cylinder magnet, doesn't matter if it's a bar magnet or whatnot. Here we know we have a double hyperbola conjugation of polarization, radiation, as Faraday and Maxwell called it, the dielectric field. Dielectricity is charging. All charge necessitates discharge. All centrifugal necessitates centripetal. All divergence necessitates convergence. It is literally that simple. Here we have our centrifugal and a returning centripetal. Same thing on both sides. Centrifugal, divergence, centripetal, convergence. This is why it is a permanent magnet. But it isn't a magnet, it is a dielectric object. Magnetism is radiation. It is polarization, it is the creation of space. Radiation does not attract anything. What you think is magnetic attraction is dielectric avoidance. What is driving, it's called attribute fallacy reification, is blaming the appearance of flies upon horseshit. Okay, magnetism is horseshit. What is driving it all is the dielectricity. It's really not an infinity sign, it's just concentrated right there at the center. Block wall is not an explanation. Here we have our centrifugal and our centripetal convergence. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. Let's repeat that again because some people can't seem to understand it. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. Max velocity at the apex. Here we have max velocity at the cone. Starts out slow. Remember, you can take this magnet and slice it a million ways if you could. Each little piece would be identical to this. 
with the dielectric inertial plane, with the magnetism, polarization equals radiation equals the creation of space. That is why it is point nonspecific self-similarity. The Pythagoreans called this the Aristos Dias, or Tolma. It is anakie to the conjugate system. Sorry, I threw in some Greek there. It is field incommensurability, just like a holographic positive. No, I'm not comparing a magnet to a hologram. I'm just using an analogy. Divergence, convergence. Like I said, Mother Nature called. She told me that she never created a negative charge. That's like saying hot ice or a pregnant baby or you know, uh, a baby born to a barren woman. There's no such thing as a negative charge. There's only charge, discharge, centrifugal, centripetal, divergence, convergence, spatial, counterspatial. This is our magnetic system. This is it. I've proven this with 14 different models. This is the missing secret of magnetism. It is very simple. Remember, centrifugal, slow here, fast. That's, you can measure this with a Gauss meter. Max velocity. Centrifugal is right here. And you can also use a Gauss meter. Don't take my word for it. You also have high Gauss readings here, here, and here on either pole of the magnet. Here, here, here. Okay? Some people say, well, a magnet has four poles. Well, everything works against lowest pressure gradient reciprocation, which means that, of course, intermediate pressures don't have the ability to make it all the way through reciprocation. What they do is they see these patterns on a CRT tube and they think, well, a magnet has four poles. Now what you're seeing is intermediate reciprocation right here. This is our intermediate points where we don't have enough velocity at the centrifugal exit to make it all the way around for centripetal reintegration. That's why people see intermediate fields like this on CRT tubes and other devices. Let's take a quick look again. This is really simple. A 10-year-old should be able to understand it. The ether is the ether is the ether is the ether. We only have four things in nature, okay? Radial. Understood, like dielectricity. Circular, like magnetism in an AC circuit, not in a magnet, which is centrifugal and centripetal. We have counterspatial, like dielectricity, and the field of gravity. These are the four modalities of the ether. And spatial. Everything spatial is radiation only. Mass accumulates spatially, but its field is counterspatial. CS, counterspatial. SP, spatial, circular, magnetism, radiation. Everything over here is radiation. Everything over here is either, depending on the scenario, generation or radiation. It is simple. I should say simplex, but not simple. I always make these videos really late at night when I'm just flat on my butt tired after doing a thousand things, especially after having made an enormous discovery. Magnetism is radiation. I wished it was actually something different than that. When I first started down this path, I was hoping that magnetism would be something special in and of itself. But one discovery led to another, and it's just been snowballing like crazy. A bunch of inventors have been calling me. I've got ideas for new patents. They just keep flying out of me. Really good stuff. Had some amazing discoveries recently. This is our magnet. This is the incommensurability of Fi, field incommensurability. This is the magnet, centrifugal, divergent, centripetal, convergent. It cannot exist any other way. It is impossible. Proven this now with experiment after experiment. I'm not deluding myself or anybody else. This is the only way it works. Magnetism is radiation. Magnetism is not driving a magnet, nor is it driving voidance or countervoidance, or what you refer to as attraction or repulsion. It cannot definitionally. As the inverse fallacy of uh, attribute reification.